Yesterday at Tech World, Lenovo took the wraps of the next Moto flagships, the Moto Z and Moto Z Force. So here are nine things you need to know about them. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech, and let's get started. Number one, the specs. Both the Moto Z and the Z Force are powered by the Snapdragon 820 chip. Now that's four custom cryo cores with two sets clocked at 2.2 and 1.6 gigahertz each, coupled with an Adreno 530 GPU and four gigs of RAM. There are 32 and 64 gig variants available. And number two, just like the G4 Plus, we have expandable storage and we also get a fingerprint scanner, quite similar to what we've seen. The speed and accuracy were great on the G4 Plus, so I expect this to perform as well, if not better. Number three, build. We have a metal back, the height and width are within a few millimeters of each other. The Moto Z weighs in at around 135 grams and the Z Force again around 163 grams. The Z Force is seven millimeters thick despite packing in a 37, I mean 3500 milliamp hour battery. There's a camera bump on both phones and the Moto Z is just 5.2 millimeters thick. And before you can think, damn, small battery, wait, Moto's gone with a 2600 milliamp hour battery on the Moto Z, which is, yes, a little lower than what I would have liked. And yeah, 3500 mAh, like I said, on the Z Force, but there's a bug. And that brings us to number four. These phones will be compatible with a range of Moto mods. Lenovo kinda tried it in the past with the Lenovo Vibe X2, the world's first layered smartphone and all, that didn't work quite well. But here the implementation is a little different. We get 16 pogo pins to the back and there the accessories are motor mods that snap in over here. And these are held in place via magnets. These accessories include one, a battery pack from Incipio. That's a 2200 milliamp hour battery pack. So if you feel the phone is way too thin and you wanna, you prefer the brand to have gone with a thicker phone with a larger battery, here you go, you can add 2200mAh to it. How does this differ from your regular battery uh, cases? Well, the phone gets thicker, but the width and height remain the same. And this also adds wireless charging to the phone. Number two, JBL Sound Boost. This is a speaker that comes with its own 1000mAh battery, so won't be draining your phone's already small battery if you're using a uh, Moto Z. Lenovo claims that it should be able to play music for up to 10 hours at least. Neat. Number three, an InstaShare projector. Despite the lower 854 by 480 pixel resolution, I love the fact that you can project your display on the wall and this is supposed to replicate a 70 inch display uh, if you're gonna space it that way. But the downside here is that there's a 1100 mAh battery powering this and the battery life Lenovo states will be around an hour. So let's wait and see how this turns out. Anyway, that brings us to the last mod that's available right now. Uh, the Moto flagship for the last few years have been all about customization, Moto Maker and whatnot. So we do get Moto Swap packs, leather, wood and more. These should let you customize the looks and feel of your phone and seems like a li nice way to hold on to tradition while not sacrificing on innovation. So I like these uh, covers that go onto the back, but again, they are gonna be held in place via the magnet. So how effective are they? Only time will tell when the phone goes on sale later. Anyway, after seeing this, the first question in my head was, are Moto Mods better than LG Friends? Is this the, a better way to do modularity? On the pro side, you don't need to turn off your phone. You can just add the mods and that seems really intriguing. And Moto also says you will be able to continue using these mods. It will be compatible with future Moto phones. Both are not possible with the G5. But that said, like I just said, the magnets, will they hold up well? How will how easy would it be to pry them off? How easy would it be to accidentally knock them out? So these are things only time will tell, but I'd love to know what you guys have to say about it. So here we go, poll time, click, let me know what you think. Number five, the cameras. 13 megapixels on the Moto Z, 21 megapixel on the Z Force, both with laser assist for autofocus, face deduction autofocus, a dual tone, dual LED flash, and f by 1.8 aperture. The cameras, again, are quite interesting. Heating issues apart, I love the camera on the Moto G4 Plus. It's probably the best in its price segment. So I really can't wait to get my hands on these phones and see how these cameras perform. Number six, display. Both phones feature 5.5 inch Quad HD displays 
After skipping a generation, we are finally back with AMOLED here. Welcome news in my honest opinion because motor display will drain lesser battery now. And that's all the more important given that there's only a puny 2600mAh battery on the Moto Z. It's also worth noting that the Z Forces screen uses Moto Shatter Shield technology, meaning it should be resistant to scratches and cracks, even more so than Corolla Glass. Number seven, this might be the most controversial part of this release. Thanks to shooting for the thinnest premium handset tag, Moto's had to ditch the 3.5mm headphone jack on the Z. And since they ditched it on the Z, they decided why not and ditched it on the Z Force as well. So just like Lurie coded, they will be providing a Type-C to 3.5mm converter on the box. This means you can't listen to music while charging the phone. Is that something that bothers you or do you feel this is an innovation, the way to move on? Again, poll, let me know. So, number eight, the software. The Z and Z Force will release with Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow out of the box. Expect fast updates, a close to stock Android experience with a few minor changes like motor display, touchless controls, and a revamped camera app. And that brings us to number nine, the most important, I guess, pricing and availability. The pricing has not been officially confirmed, but these phones should be available internationally in September. And in the US, they will be sold as a Verizon exclusive under the Troid branding for a while before being made available unlocked and via other carriers. And the pricing, uh, based on past experience, I should, uh, I would expect them to be priced around the X Tile and the X Force. So that's that. Anyway, guys, that's nine things I thought you should know about the Moto Z and the Moto Z Force. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, do give this video a thumbs up. If you didn't, vote it down. Do let me know what you'd like for me to do differently the next time around in the comments below. And I guess that's it. Uh, while you're down there, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you do want to help the channel out, consider changing your flip card and Amazon bookmarks to ones with our affiliate ID. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ashia from C4 Retech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye bye now.